everyone, Dandelion Princess here, and today we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite Kingdom Hearts villains. This is a video that I've wanted to do for quite some time now, and since it's October, I figured this would be the perfect time. Of course, I just want to remind everyone that this is all just my opinion, and if your favorite Kingdom Hearts villain isn't on here, I apologize. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 is Luxord. Now, I personally just think that he's a pretty interesting character. And out of all the organization members, Luxord is one of the ones that we know very little about. But out of everyone in the organization, he is one of the more interesting members. And I've really enjoyed the boss fights that we've had with him through the series as they're always pretty unique. And the fact that his ability is time means that he could definitely be getting some more screen time as the series progresses. Even within the Kingdom Hearts DLC, it seems like he's going to have some sort of importance. So, he's definitely a character that I have my eyes on. Number 9 on the list is Zexion. Now, I'll admit that in the beginning, I didn't really find him a very interesting character. And even now, he's really nowhere close to being my favorite organization member. But what I find interesting about him is that he was so young when everything went down, and when everyone became nobodies. He was honestly more of a victim than anything, because I'm sure he was deceived by the others, so that he would follow them. And I will admit that he is pretty smart. And within Kingdom Hearts 3, he's already been proving himself that he is going to be a pretty good ally to Sora and the others. Zexion is a character that I definitely want to learn a little more about. Coming in at number 8 has to be Demix. Now, I know that he's not necessarily a fan favorite within the Kingdom Hearts community, and some even wonder why he is part of the organization, but for me, it's very easy to see. Though he is a bit of a slacker, when he actually tries, he is very powerful. His boss fight in Kingdom Hearts 2 really did throw me through a loop. And just like Luxord, we don't really know a lot about Dimix. I'm definitely very interested in finding out more about him. And aside from all that, he does manage to get a laugh out of me. Unlike most of the organization members, he's a lot more lighthearted, and it's really a breath of fresh air. I especially like whenever he interacts with Larxene. Speaking of, number 7 on the list is Larxene. Now, being the only girl on the organization gives her a bit of an upper hand as it definitely makes her stick out a little more and be a bit more memorable. But to be fair, even if there were other girls on the team, I think she would still stick out. She has a very loud personality. Now, unlike some of the other organization members who seems like they're just going through the motions and doing what they need to do, Larixene truly loves her job. You can always see just how satisfied she is by causing pain. And it's actually surprising how good she is at mind games and getting inside the heads of her opponents, a skill that is always really useful as a villain. Coming in at number 6 is Syax. Now, Syax is interesting to me for a couple different reasons. One thing is his ability to take strength from the moon. I always thought that was a pretty cool thing that he could do, 
and it made his boss fight pretty interesting in Kingdom Hearts 2. He wasn't too terribly hard, but you can still definitely see how powerful he is. It's also just interesting to me to watch him sort of rise through the ranks of the organization. And though it's only with the addition of Kingdom Hearts 3 that we're sort of understanding why it was so important to him. This subject ex-girl that he has been looking for really brings a whole new layer to his character. And of course, I definitely found his relationship with Axel to be pretty interesting. And I definitely always wanted to see a little more of their dynamic. Coming in at number 5 is Marluxia. Now, I've always thought Marluxia was a pretty cool character. First and foremost, just the fact that he's willing to betray the organization. Like, whenever I see a bad guy who is, like, gonna betray the other bad guys, I always find that just really cool and interesting. And it really shows you what kind of person they are. And again, he's one of those characters that I think there's definitely a lot more to them that, that we don't know yet. It's just something that's very intriguing. His boss fights were also very hard, but of course that may be due to the fact that most of his boss fights were in Rechain of Memories, and I'm just not very good at that game. Coming in at number 4 is Axel. Now, I know out of all the members of the organization, it seems like Axel is definitely the least threatening one. And indeed it's true that he did start playing for Team Good pretty early on in the series. But that doesn't mean that he didn't stand out as a villain while he was one. To me, Axel made a very good villain and may have become my favorite villain if he was a villain for longer. But within his short time as a villain, he was pretty relentless. I mean, need I remind you of this? Axel! Yo, Sora. Did I catch you at a bad time? <laughs> Axel, why? I came to stop you from talking too much. By eliminating your existence. No, don't do it! We are just nobodies who have no one to be, yet we still are. But now you can be nothing instead of just being a nobody. You're off the hook. No! Please don't! I don't want to- Goodbye. What are you? What are you people? Axel is the kind of character that you never really know what to expect from them. And it was always really hard to peg down what his goal was. It really seemed like he could do anything, betray anyone. Nothing was off the table for him. Coming in at number three is the big bad himself, Xehanort. Now, to me, it's not really hard to see what made him such a good villain. He was behind everything from the very beginning. He was willing to use anyone and anything he needed to to get to his goal. I also found him to be a pretty complex character in the end. Seeing a bit of Xehanort in his younger days really shows that everything's not just black and white. He didn't start out evil, and I really appreciate that. And coming in at number two is Zigbar. I love Zigbar, and I really always have since the beginning. The first Kingdom Hearts game I played was Kingdom Hearts 2, and from the minute that he was on screen, 
he definitely stood out. Even without seeing his face because he had his hood up, he was still very memorable. His boss fights are fun and unique. I just really enjoy whenever he's on screen because he just has this attitude that I really enjoy. And honestly, I always knew that he would play a bigger role into the series and that there are definitely things that he was hiding. He had his own agenda and that was clear from the beginning. And I'm so glad that it finally came to fruition in Kingdom Hearts 3. The reveal for Zigbar being Lushu was honestly one of the best reveals in the series to me. And I really can't wait to see more and just figure out what's inside the box and, and everything else that is going on with him. And coming in at number one, is Zimnis. Now, I know it may seem strange to some people saying Zimnis is my favorite villain, as I've definitely heard some people say that he can be a little bland at times, but you have to understand, like I said, Kingdom Hearts 2 was my first Kingdom Hearts game, so he was really my first big villain. Not only that, but I really love Zimnis's boss fight at the end of King Hearts 2. And they made it super clear how hard it was for Sora and Riku to bring him down. You could definitely feel the weight that that fight had on them. I also actually had the pleasure of meeting Zimnis's voice actor, Paul St. Peters, a couple times. So, I may be a little biased. In all reality, Zimnis to me is just a really good, ominous, threatening villain. And there you have it, that is my top 10 Kingdom Hearts villains. But I want to hear from you guys. Who is your guys' favorite villain? And who do you want to learn more about? I for one definitely can't wait to see what comes next in the series and see what kind of villains the series has to offer next. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.